And I, you know, I quickly, um, whenever I talk about anything that is hair related, um, the things that you will find uh, that I talk about a lot are really about us um, really having conversations that are more about uh, the effect that will happen with a tool or with a technique. Um, I think that we all have come from um, places in our past where we really felt like that there were these hard yes and no, right and wrong spaces. And I think what I really, really love is just really talking about how we can explore ideas together um, and talk about their effects as opposed to being like, this is the right and wrong way to do something. Um, I think there's a freedom in that, and I love that. So I'm gonna start, so with Sierra, just so you all know, we are really gonna be kind of creating this interesting like bi-level. Uh, this originally was like a little bi-level bob, which started here, and then we have little bits that were here. But Sierra's grown it out a little bit more, but we're gonna keep the bi-level. Um, but what I wanna do is because when we were here, I did a very tight stroke, um, which gives me a very consistent line which you'll see a little bit later um, that I'll use. But now that it's longer, it's a little bit more languid, the hair. And Sierra has a really nice uh, amount of movement and texture. So I'm actually gonna be broadening my stroke. See how I'm going up and down in a much broader way. This is gonna encourage more movement, a sense of separation. I don't want to have something that's very fluid in a place that's very unstationary, right? Like when I'm here on the neck, there's a stationary place that that line lives. When I'm down here, this hair will move. And so I'm thinking in terms of like, what can I create to kind of encourage that movement? And that means for me doing a broader stroke. Now, even though I'm doing this broader stroke, you'll notice this. I like to tilt my razor like this. I get that perfect little edge, right? And I get a very clean cut when I'm on the tilt. Now, when I'm on the flat like this, I get a more um, kind of chewed line, which I think can be a very cool effect on the right person. If you're looking to be like a little more editorial in your haircut, maybe it's like a little chewed up doll kind of vibe. So depending on the rotation, you get different effects. Yes. And then the size of the stroke gives you different effects as well. 1,000%. So here's a very basic question, yep. but we get it a lot. Why do you choose to use this type of razor? And does that have a guard on it? And if not, why not? It does not have a guard on it. Um, I, um, I am not opposed to guarded razors, but I feel like this. I feel like if I'm looking to create a really, really, really clean uh, line, a precision cut, I don't want anything that is serrated when I'm working. So think of it almost like if you were cutting with a knife at home that was really sharp at the edge, you get that clean cut. Whereas if you look at like a bread knife, you're getting kind of get things that are more serrated, right? So I want to be in control of the effect. I don't want the tool to necessarily dictate that for me. So that's why I opt to kind of go through and keep everything more in, uh, more without doing the serrated one. But it's I just do, sharper and tighter. It's sharper, yeah. tighter. And see now, um, because with the razor, one thing that you will find is this, is the when we're working with a scissor, we can get really kind of, we almost like match our lines, right? Like we're kind of building on top of them. We're going, you can cut it here, then you can kind of do it like here. When you're dealing with a razor, I need enough space for that stroke. So what you're gonna notice is each section I actually drop below what I cut prior, so I'm not cutting into that space. And if I look at something and I go, I think I need a little more air in it, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the darkest spot, right? So like this is a little dark to me, that's an indicator that I can go through and release the weight. And when I'm going through and I'm releasing weight as I'm working, I kind of come in, I do that tilt, and I bring it down. So you see how I'm just really wanting to kind of encourage this naturalness to kind of come through. No, I, what I love is the simplicity of, you know, you're really just in tune with the hair. Yeah. And it's not like you have to kind of overthink the angles or the structure. Mm -hmm. It's more just about the fabric. Yes. Do, do, how do you feel about that? I love that. And I think that this is the thing. The thing that I love, I think most of us um, really identify more, um, we 
identify more as artist, and I think the reality is this. When you start using the razor, it feels like an extension of yourself. Um, I do use scissors a lot. I'm not, you know, I don't only use the razor. But when I'm using um, my razor, there's a fluidity that comes, and it feels like it's of you. Yeah, Artistic just like flows things. from your brain right to your fingertips. Exactly. Yeah. And when we're talking about this stuff, you know, don't, my, my thing is this, is really when we're talking about the angles and we're talking about going in, releasing weight, when we're talking about all these kind of fundamental aspects that come from working with a razor, all you're trying to do in the beginning is just learn the technique so that your fingers can start to execute what's in your imagination. It's an extension of your imagination, right? And so that's what I love about it. Now, I just, my body just knows. My body goes in there and I become freer and freer and freer as I kind of go. My body's just like, oh, I'm in here. I gotta tilt like this, you know? So in the beginning, you're gonna think a lot about it. And then as you move forward, you're gonna think less and less about that and think about what you wanna execute. Wes, can you talk a little bit about how you hold the tool? I think it's, yeah. people pick up the folding razor like this and it's like not natural. Like, okay, how, how do I hold this? What do I, I do? Know. I've seen a barber hold it. Maybe I'll do it that way. Right. I, so what I like to do is I like to flip it open. And then what I'm doing is this finger goes here and then this finger goes here. I like to really brace it like this. So I really have, so this way, this gives me an ability. Look, I got a little, uh, I got a little uh, blister doing my driver, um, <laughs> country lad. Um, so I like to hold it like this because this allows me the most flexibility when it comes to sectioning. So I am not a, uh, I am not a razor cutter that cuts, puts something down. I like to keep the fluidity. So when I am holding this, this gives me the perfect way. So when I'm ready to cut, my thumb is here, my index, I think that's the index finger, is like placed right here, it's really, I have a lot of control here. The fluidity actually comes from my wrist. It's not coming um, from me being loose with the tool. Mm. The tool is stable, mm. the fluidity comes from here, and then when I need to section, I'm slowly churning, I'm gripping like this, because now the razor is away from the, Safe and sound. Yep, exactly. And then I can go right into my strokes. You know, it's again, I, what I love about razor cutting is it takes the simple things of hairdressing that you're going to be doing every day for the rest of your career and makes them more organic and artistic. Like just putting in a line like you're doing now. Really? I mean, again, yes, as you said, you could point it with scissors, you could slice, you could. But it's kind of unnatural in a way with the scissor. You have to force your body positions and yeah. use the tool or maybe get a special third kind of scissor to yeah. do it. Where the razor is what it's really designed for and it's just so natural and comfortable. So I see you working the, with the hair a lot with, yeah. your, um, with your hand. Totally. What are you looking for? So I'm looking for weight. So like, look, so right now, I mean, I don't know if this will translate to the screen, but see this, like we can even get it from here. See this airiness that's in here? This I know has released enough weight that it's gonna really encourage the movement that's in Sierra's hair. By airiness, you mean there's like space you can there's see through space, it all? space, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can see more different bends of the hair. So I always think of it like this. Now, Sierra has um, a hair texture um, that's not really predominant. It can actually kind of go flat. Like all this movement, all this texture can disappear because the length equals weight and weight is what will pull out some of the texture that's in the hair. So now I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, so I love what's happening here. And then I look at this guy and I'm like, you are a little form for me, honey. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna release more of that weight. Now there are a couple ways that we can do this when we're thinking about weight removal. I have a tendency more, if I'm wanting ret to retain the most length, is to go on where it is darker, but it's more in the center of what is hanging over top, meaning this. So I'm releasing this weight here, but this is gonna be very consistent. So I'm, I'm encouraging that. Now I could go on the top, but the more that I go on the top, I'm really creating more of a surface texture of the hair, which could be fine too, but I'm really kind of looking more to just see this kind of intertwine.
line. I'm not looking for this to get too, um, I'm not looking for it to be all layered here. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Cool. No, no. And then now we're going to be, uh, I'm doing what's called like a little transition. Um, and transitions are really just like, you know, I'm moving from one place and I'm moving to another place. And I'm finding that on the link now, I really want to kind of, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to tuck that behind the ear. And then there's sometimes when you get into places where you're working and you're like, you know what? Boo, I don't know how I'm going to hold this like this and do this. It's okay to just grab little sections and then like that. So sometimes my finger changes just because I don't have enough to grab. So this allows this to kind of just be kind of, there's going to be a slight little bit of longer in here which we could either keep or get rid of but it's because i have tucked from behind the ear now the reason is is because i can't really now traditionally when we're working with a scissor right and this is true of all things with like a bob right you could really kind of do a little tapping on that ear you know that trick i love that sure do. Release, <laughs> some <of the> tension. <laughs> release some of that tension for the pop of the ear well i need to be on top of this and so in order for me, because tension, you need tension whenever you are cutting with a razor. So this all has to be tight, right? Because I'm coming on top of the hair and cutting it. So for me, what I have to do is I just think about it like this. I'm like, you know what? Well, if distance will equal length, then I'm actually going to compensate with that little bit of length, which is going to make up for that little pop of the ear. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and move on through here. So I like to do, I, some people like to do uh, different, uh, I like to do one whole side and then just move on from there. Um, other people like to do it in a different way. And you see how I'm just kind of going through and it's not really even that much, you know, but, um, but it's just taking that. And that's also what I love too. I love it when you get to a place where you're very comfortable and you can just do these things that just seem, you know, kind of scary, I think, in the beginning. Like cutting close to your finger, like cutting, cutting small amounts. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's so intimidating in the beginning. But now, because I'm going over that section, I can actually let that drop out. And the cool part is this too. So when we're talking about strokes, right? Like, um, you know, we think in terms of like the broadness of the stroke. We think about a tighter stroke. And I'm gonna move here. And oftentimes what you will find uh, when you're dealing in different strokes is in the beginning, when you're just trying to learn the stroke itself, you're kind of in a, in a position where you're like, you just need to do that. Like, that's all you need to do. You just need to practice that one thing. Like, maybe you're like, I'm on broader strokes. But what will happen, and this is what makes the joy of it, because really, you know, we as artists, we have a tendency to get a little bored. Let's get real with the situation, right? We get bored, and that's not sustainable for a lifetime career. So what the cool part about working with the razor, kind of like what you were bringing up before, is that this is of you, but what it really, really does is here, when I'm working, like I'm looking at this section, and I may go, you know what? Because I might need a little bit more integrity in that section, right? So it allows you to kind of be a, uh, it allows you to be a person that is um, aware as you're working the entire time. And you're kind of engaged with the entire process. I also think that there's something really cool when it comes to like being engaged with like a haircut um, that kind of honestly just comes from the fact that like you're holding this very sharp object near yourself. And Shoveling drainage rock in my driveway. That's 
state. <laughs> so now we've taken care of all of this, and this is where I want to kind of start to work um, with what we're doing as our little um, bi-level, which was already in this haircut, um, but I really want to kind of do something. Like, I like it when we kind of build things that create options for people, and, and Sierra is so good because Sierra always comes, Sierra always comes to everybody that comes, she comes to me at least, with uh, some really always editorial references, and so I think this was something, you know, we got to give credit where credit is due, but I think that it was uh, Guido who had done this really beautiful kind of bi-level on one of the shows, and so Sierra was like, I want this, and so... Um, Guido has this thing of making everything that's kind of like out of fashion, old and weird, new and modern right, and beautiful. Right, yeah. exactly. So cool. So I'm really kind of going through and kind of like looking at all this stuff, making sure that like it's going to kind of lay well. I'm on a diagonal on these two. Um, so I want to separate this in section here. But what is cool about this that I really, really like is that, um, you know, she could pin this up and have a little mini bob, you know, which I think is sweet, or she could wear it down and be super cool. Um, we have done this a few different ways. Um, one way is the one way that we didn't like that we did, just as a note, in the past when I did it before, I really took all of this section here and it was a little too mullety for Sierra, and it was hard to kind of wear and work with, right? Like, that one wasn't so good. Um, so, you know, that's just me being honest with y'all. Uh, <laughs> sometimes when you gotta play, <laughs> you gotta figure out how it looks. And also, when you're looking at something that is a, that is a reference from an image, I always say, if you wanna try that, then try it on someone that you trust and that you like and they trust you because an image and I've I, at this point in my life we have probably shot a, a million of them and I will tell you that moment is one moment that is captured that has no life injected into it so when we did that with Sierra even though technically that could have been the space that was the exact visual recreation of what was in that image, it actually didn't translate into real life. You know, it didn't wear the same way. So sometimes when you're playing with this, give yourself a little bit of space. So now I will tell you this, because you could do this a couple different ways. You could actually take this and do a little subsection. Um, but what I'm looking to do is I'm actually looking to take this whole section because I think I can handle the amount that's in between my fingers and in addition, I kind of want this to have a little bit of soft erraticness that will only happen if I kind of bring this into it. So I'm almost kind of using the fact that this will be, because this line is going to be real tight. So that's a real short stroke. Sure is. How do you ensure balance on the second side? Um, I don't think I understand the question. <laughs> you just uh, go for the feeling rather than trying to make it exactly the same? Um, it doesn't need to necessarily be exactly the same, but I have, 
I don't have a guide per se, but I do have kind of visual marks that I'm thinking about. Like I'm like, oh, okay, like, you know, this one is kind of like a little bit below the lobe, you know, so I'm looking like, I'm being like, okay, so we'll keep it a little bit below the lobe. Or sometimes I'll look about like where I want to kind of reveal somebody at, you know, like, so this is going to kind of arc in a cool way and really create like a sweet, Just going back and forth and looking at the facial looking, structure. Yeah, it's that kind of like classic, um, it's kind of that classic thing. I think barbers do this really beautifully where they really rotate and they, barbers are really good at zooming in and then zooming out, you know? Like they automatically, they're like, they're here and then they're turning and looking in the mirror. So I'm just going back and forth and just checking. I don't necessarily need it to be exact. I don't necessarily think that's the haircut, but I want it to not be... I always ask myself, is it often interesting or is it just off? Right? It's a good question. Yeah. Good question to ask yourself. We got a little bang action coming on here. How are we doing on time? I'm sometimes so fast, you know? No, we're great. You just take your time, do your thing. Well, I'm 23 worried. minutes in. Actually, which is... I'm worried that we're going to Shortest. So what? What did you just spray? <laughs> Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about uh, product and the hair story yes. products that you've been working with so since the beginning. This is the thing. Um, I discovered this is undressed. It has a very fancy French name, but I am not fancy or French, so I'll call it undressed. And this is the deal. So what I have, what this actually happened with me, with you, one time, we were doing something like this together. And it was like, live action. And then I was like, um, I forgot my water bottle. And I was like, well, I got some undressed because like you start the camera and you can't really do anything about it. So this is, um, I'm actually using this to re-wet the hair, but this is a salt spray without the salt. So it actually feels like conditioner in the hair but you get that visual cool effect that you get from a traditional salt spray without. Mm. So without being gritty or grimy, yeah. yeah. So I can actually use this as a base. And what I found in that experience with you, that time that I messed up and didn't bring my water bottle, um, was that I really loved the effect that I got um, as I let it just kind of sit. I mean, I think marinate is such a gross word. <laughs> So that is what I'm using, and I love that product. All the products here are just like, I don't know, they're just like the best version of people's hair, if that makes sense. It's like, it looks like really, it all looks like, oh, it just happened in a really cool way. It's almost like that. And Hair Story is uh, very confident that if you try the product, you'll know that it's something special and unique and different and want to share it with your clients. Mm -hmm. So I'll be sharing a link here on the post. You can come back afterwards and it'll be uh, pinned at the top where you'll be able to try their new wash, which is their hero product, really, the, the kind of birth of the brand. It's a uh, surfactant-free cleanser. Um, one step, you don't need conditioner, it changes the way that hair feels and works, it doesn't strip it, it cleanses and conditions it uh, using different things besides surfactants, natural oils and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. You know, I, the reason why, and, the, and uh, trust me, I never thought that I would be the person that would be, I never thought I would like be at the shampoo and conditioner. I'm like, if you would have told me that 15 years ago, I would have been like, you know, crazy. That's boring as hell. Like, I'm like, that's the least exciting part about my job, but this product, the new wash, creates this perfect base for people. And 
the state that I was like, oh, just don't try to put that out there. Right. Because I hated the effect. And I also hated that I had to, like, make sure that they left with 15 other products in order for me to make sure that their hair didn't look like it was shampoo. And I love the fact that, <laughs> like, I love the fact that this creation is really just like, oh, well, why doesn't, like, why doesn't the product company change as opposed to me having to educate my clients to change what they need to do? Why don't we just make something that works better? So, and with really amazing, you know, aloe and essential oil-based product that is really incredible. They just encourage us to hear that we see. So really you had the three, three different elements, the line in the back, mm -hmm. Um, where you, you talked about different types of strokes, then yeah. releasing the weight, yeah. um, then the kind of little sideburn area, which yeah. is, gives it the bi-level. Yeah. I guess in some ways it's a tri-level because then you have the bang, right? Bang, we did a tri-level today. Yeah. <laughs> Simple and, and beautiful. Um, now, again, I guess that question always comes up, like why do you choose the razor like right off the bat? Like, could you do something like this with the scissor? And, oh yeah, yeah why, why Why um, did you feel the razor is the right? Because I like that the razor inherently creates a naturally diffused line, whether it's a broader stroke or a smaller stroke. So when these, these shapes, right, like as hair grows, it becomes more languid, right? Like it, it'll lose its stationary places. And for me, whenever I use the razor, I love the fact that this will go on a journey. Like it'll just kind of keep getting good because it's not a hard line that's trying to shift. There's an inherent, even in these blunt lines, there's a softness to this edge that will move and melt into itself yeah. beautifully. Something super interesting, like, you know, a lot of us when we were trained many, many years ago, it was like, cut it perfectly clean so it grows in well. And then you learned over time that actually if it's a little bit softer, it, it kind of lasts better. It you lasts agree? a yeah. lot longer because we don't have you know, it's the hair and it's growing, you know, at, at different places. It's often, I find, growing at different rates. And that softness at the edge allows everything to really kind of melt and merge. I would say it goes on a journey. I'm not a very hippie person, but I love that journey. I love that it goes on a journey. All right, so it looks like you've chosen to diffuse. You've yeah. got your Dyson with the diffuser attachment. Sure do. Why? Why not blow blow her out? Um, you know what? I have because this is the thing. I don't think either one of those are necessarily uh, the wrong choice. But I feel like this. I feel like I have worked with Sierra uh, for long enough that I know that when I, she has hair, that if I do just like straight up blow drying, it gets a little poofy. It just gets a little expansive. And also, we cut this to see some of this natural texture coming in. And I think our clients have moved into spaces where, you know, they don't always want to be doing an epic blow dry at home. They want to wear it in a more natural state. They want to wear it air dried. And this allows me to kind of like, even though I'm working with it, I'm also just encouraging the natural texture of the haircut to come out. So that is what I love about being able to kind of work with a diffuser. And I will say, like, you know, I don't have a, you know, I don't have a deal with Dyson or anything, but I do love this diffuser. It's kind of made people a lot more comfortable with diffusing because yeah. it kind of does what it says. Like it doesn't blow the hair around or make exactly. it frizzy. I think in the past, you know, even professional hairdressers are like, oh, I don't want to diffuse it because it might not come out really finished. And I know that time where, like, you also had to be careful because I worked at a big salon and those diffusers used to fly across the yeah, room. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Yes, I do. You'd be like dodging. Yeah. The, magnet, the magnet on the Dyson makes it a huge diff. Sure does. So this is just kind of helping encourage just like that natural texture. All the things are coming into play here, you know? All of these things about um, the new wash, not stripping the hair first, going through, uh, using the razor, using the undress to help encourage this as well. Give it a little bit of a base is 
what I like to think about. And then just kind of working, working together. All this stuff just kind of starts to work together to make something. I think the most beautiful images that I ever saw um, were the ones where you look at someone's hair and you're like, wow, it just looks like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Like, so like it just, like they just kind of, I love that kind yeah. of. It's interesting. There's like a certain aesthetic. There are certain hairdressers that love things that look like they were really complicated yeah. to create, uh, and certain hairdressers that love things that are just like, just looks like it happened. Like yeah. you said, it's kind of. Uh, I guess there are some that love both, but it's just kind of an interesting yeah. aesthetic choice. It's very very interesting. So I really, um, I like. Um, you know what, I have a respect for both, I have to be honest with you, because there's something like, you know, like, I mean, I used to work with Laurent a long time ago, and he would make structural things, like, because I'm rolling, um, there's tension within the roll, right? So like the outer part might be there, but when, so when I shake it out, I get something that's a little bit more erratic. So on areas where you want something that's gonna be a little bit more natural, but you need a bit more control in your process, you can always twist and heat them up. And I do that without the diffuser too. A lot of rolling. We roll. And Sierra, how do you draw your own hair? Do you do the kind of finger twists, or do you just let it go? Um, let it go, or doing a little, little scrunching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's an art to the simplicity of diffuse drawing. You know, yeah. I think that again, people were scared of it for years because it's like easier to just know exactly what you're going to get with a brush and right. okay I'm going to make it smooth and I'm going to curl exactly. it this way where with the dryer you kind of have to read the hair respond to the hair yeah. but it's never been more popular than it is now I know I love it and I think like uh, you know I think that there are definitely like some people I think there are definitely some people out there that have like led the, the charge on that like I think um, I think James was a great person to really get that message across. Yep. A um, lot of tension on social media for soft, wearable, yeah. natural hair. And we did that thing together. Remember yeah. when we were in Long Island? I mean, not Long Island. Long Beach. Long Beach, that's yeah. what it's called. I was on the Queen Mary, honey. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think working with him. And also what's interesting, too, why I like the twist to be completely honest with you is I am not uh, like I'm not that zen hairdresser like I'm a hairdresser that's like I want to play so a lot of that kind of like I'm going to hover for 30 minutes it's like I'm like how can I get there and play all at the same time yeah. so the twist actually does help me do that too you know, I mean, back in the day when we wanted to hover for 30 minutes, we'd put people under, like, heat yes, lamps. Heat totally. lamps. That works really well. That could be cool, too. Or even, like, a, put a hairnet over it and then mm. put them under the dryer mm. so it doesn't get, like, sucked up into the dryer, but it dries flat. I love that. Now, Wes, uh, you're based here in the Hair Story Studio. You've been obviously a big part of the brand since the beginning. This is kind of um, a main floor here where the creative stuff happens, videos, and uh, you, do you, do you still doing clients here? Yeah, I still see clients here for sure. No, I love that. I mean, I think that what I, what I love
very talented hairdressers, but they were just, they were, it was part of the tap dance, right? And they weren't at the table, and the table is where the decisions are made a lot of times. And so to make sure that this company is built around um, the community as a whole is really, I think, unique, in, in my opinion, out of all the things that I've seen. And so I just really, I think it's special. So that's also part of my job. But I think that if I stepped away from seeing clients on a, you know, being able to see my clients, I wouldn't be able to translate, even though I've been doing it a long time, I wouldn't be able to translate those experiences as thoroughly and honestly to the company if I removed that part of my yeah, life. I feel exactly the same way about it. Is this too hot? Okay. Hair okay. story. Yeah, Hair Story Studio is going to be having an event here. I believe it's on September 9th. Mm -hmm. So you'll be hearing more about that from Hairbrain. We'll be sending out some email information of how you can attend with some of their artists, doing some education, some inspiration. And that's the same weekend as the Hairbrain Video Awards. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that are coming into town, you'll be able to come in on Friday night and come to the Hair Story Studio and then come through to the Video Awards on Sunday for a big party. Hair Story is going to be there in full force. Maybe you can catch a dance with Wes on the dance floor. <laughs> you better come early, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't stay late. I don't stay late. Gotta get back to the country. Exactly. I don't, I don't have an Emmy. I gotta be at home watching my shows. Watching your shows. <laughs> what are you watching these days? I just started watching a new show called, show called Outlaws. Have you seen that? No, what kind of Outlaws? Oh my God. It's on Netflix, um, and it's based in England, and it's um, a group of people that are like doing like work release, like probation for like minor crimes, wow. and it's just funny, really funny. Watch. Oh, yeah, I just but like but I really watch like murder too. Okay, all right. Like you know, 1983. <laughs> all right, so with diffuse drying like this, you know, how do you know when you're done, right? It's it does have to be 100 percent dry. Do you I like to leave? Think, for me, I don't feel like it has to be 100 percent dry. I mean, I want to look at everything and make sure everything's cool. Like even with a uh, like even with a razor. So you can, you, you, like if you feel at the end you need to come back yeah, and snip. Yeah, if I wanted you know. to like snip a little bit, like that's what I would do. Um, and I do a lot of that just because the hair is dry, but I don't think 100% dry is necessarily. I'm just looking to get to a place where like I feel like I'm getting a good read on the texture. Like the hair is not going to kind of, you know, come back tomorrow and I have a bunch of surprises because it wasn't dry enough. Does that make sense? Yeah. Dry enough to read it and see if there's anything that needs a little bit more refining. Yeah, exactly. Because there's always, like, maybe a little bit of refinement that's going to happen. Um, I think that's also part of the thing, too, is, like, that there's a freedom to not having uh, a process, I mean, yes. especially if you do it from wet to dry. Totally. Yeah, it's wet so that you can control and uh -huh. get the length off and work yep. with fresh, clean hair. I love that. And then it, you know, it needs to be refined okay. usually when it's dry, sometimes not. I need that as a t-shirt. Okay, I need hair cutting is a process, right? <laughs> like, that's so good. I'm going to be looking for that on hair brain. Yeah, 
That's a good well, one. I'm going to be looking for that at the pro shop. Though. Right on. <laughs> well, I mean, I think people are so comfortable with color being a process. It's even called processing. Yes. <laughs> but cutting is also a process. Yes. It doesn't, you know. And actually, sometimes to make it really great takes more than one appointment, you know. It's oh, yeah. Seeing how that hair responds. And learning, and, you know. Like, I always used to think, wouldn't it be great if, you know, clients came back in, like, three or four days later yeah. and you can make adjustments? Yeah. I used to, I actually used to do that before, you know, the world got crazy. And, mm. you know, I used to do that. So, um, what are we using now? So, I... Hair balm is this perfect consistency of um, kind of this perfect balance between uh, moisture and hold. Um, not too crazy hold, not like insane, but I can also use this to define the fit. So, you know, one of the things that you do have to get accustomed to whenever you are working uh, with diffusing hair, if you're like me and you're a toucher, right, and you break the rules, then you need to know that you can actually kind of smooth things down and shape them afterwards if that's what you want. So this on dry hair is genius, but I actually just take it and cut it with a little Undress? bit. With the undress? Is that so that it has less hold? Yep. It just becomes a little more like liquidy. You know, I can always go in and add, if I need more hold in the place, I can always do full strength and all that. But I'm gonna kind of just go through and start to kind of rake and form these bits, like, and asking myself these questions of like, okay, like, what is kind of messing the pool versus what's not messing the pool? You know, I, also, I often find that this relates to the razor cutting, the way that, you know, like razor cutting, say, travels through to your fingertips. This is like the same, the way you kind of like grab the pieces. You're not like clenching them really tight. You have to have this kind of, like just like a little butterfly effect. 